Welcome to August 2022. The last time I uploaded an RTGI video was one and a half years ago, which means that I am a lazy, I mean busy person. But more importantly, it means that Reshade and RTGI are a bit different again, so let's run through the setup. As always, we're going to start by updating Reshade itself. Go to reshade.me, reshade me, download. We have two versions here, Reshade 530 and 530 with full add-on support. You want to download both of them. This one gives you a warning that this build of Reshade is intended for single player games only and may cause bans in multiplayer games. Don't use it competitively, do not use it in Call of Duty, probably don't use it in Battlefield, definitely do not use it in Counter-Strike GO or PUBG. If you're using 5M, that's fine. If you're using Elden Ring Online, that's fine. The anti-cheat is garbage and it doesn't matter. Next is to download RTGI. So we're going to go to patreon.com and you're going to go to Marty McFly's page, which is slash McFlyPG. And what you want to do is you want to subscribe to the $5 tier. There are three tiers, coffee, breakfast, and book. This is the supporter role at coffee, $1 per month. It does not give you RTGI. You want $5 per month, United States dollars, breakfast, the beta tier. This is where RTGI is. Subscribe to that tier, connect to Discord. It's already got me logged in. This should give you the link to the Discord. And once that's open up, you go to user settings, authorized apps, make sure that Patreon is authorized and connected. Otherwise you will not have access to the beta channel. This is where all the new files are. You notice in here that you got your posts. You have RTGI 0.17 release. This was October 30th, 2020. This is old. We now have what was seven? Oh yeah, July. July 30th, 2022. At the end of every month, there is a new update for beta tier and alpha tier posts, but I do not have alpha access, just beta. So, latest is Reshe GI Beta 0 0.33. You're going to want to download that. Regrade Beta 0 0.12 is a color correction shader. It is called Regrade because it is color grading. It is a pun name. But you also want to download uh, 3.2.2 because there's a file that's missing and uh, small mistake. If you are using G-Shade, G-Shade uses a very, well not very old, but it uses an older version of Reshade and will not work with the newer versions. What you want is 0 0.30. That's the one you want. I'm not going to download that today because I do not play Final Fantasy XIV with G-Shade at all. Also what we want to do is there is a new feature for RTGI 0.33 that Marty talked about which was adding motion vectors. We don't know what, if you don't know what that is, I'll explain it when we get there. But first what you want to do is you want to go to the announcements channel. This one is free because this is based off of another shader done by Jacob W for motion estimation. Marty has done some optimizations, works really well. We're going to get this GitHub link. And we're going to download zip. It's going to give you a file with a lot of really big letters, numbers. It looks kind of sketchy. I'm going to be honest, it looks sketchy. But what we want <coughs> is inside, just to make sure, there is just a quint motion vectors dot effects. That's all we needed. Now, for the game. I'm going to use Elden Ring this time. First, we want to install Reshade. Not the add-on, basic Reshade. Got a bunch of stuff here. There it is, Elden Ring. Next. LPI Elden Ring is DirectX 10, 11, 12. Next. Normally there should be stuff here, but that's not working, so we're just going to hit next. Got some default packages, standard effects, suite effects, 
If you want extra stuff, here you go. There's also Quint by uh, Marty's earlier works, including uh, the lower level MXAO screen space ambient occlusion, light room, so on and so forth. We'll just hit next. Uh, uncheck all, because all I want from this is SMAA. That is all I want. Next. A bunch of different Marty effects. Bloom, D-band, depth of field. Another color correction before regrade. Uh, this one. MXAO, sharp, screen space reflections. Uh, sure, I do not want... Yeah, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. Don't want that one. These ones are okay, sure. Next. Finish. Now we will see that in Elden Ring, we have the reshade-shaders folder, which includes our shaders and textures. We have the DXGI, that's included to inject reshade, and we have the settings here. Now we are going to open reshade-shaders. There we go. We're going to want our GI beta 0.33. Open that. These two folders go here. And now we would want maybe our GI beta. We want textures. We want that to go into textures. Double check because we have blue noise and blue noise high. This is why I told you to download the 3.2.2 because this one has blue noise. But 0.33 has blue noise high. Unfortunately, we need both of them, and Marty forgot to put the file in. Oops. Good job, Marty. If you want color correction, just make sure we're back here. We have regrade shaders into here. Replace. That's done. And we want this really big file folder file. Make sure we're in shaders. So all the Quint stuff here, Quint here, it goes here. Ta-da! You now have RTGI installed with Reshade. So let's open the game. So to save time, I'm going to skip over everything I've already talked about before, including setting up your depth buffers in the first place and different RTGI settings. Uh, they all the methodology is still the same, so. Just wait watch the 0.2 video I did with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It's all the same steps. Obviously, we're going to start with our display depth. This one's working. This is already just working by default. Thank you, Elden Ring. But in case it isn't, it is now in the add-ons tab. These are where all your depth buffers is. All the settings from before still apply. Since we know that this is working, we don't need it. Turn it off. And let's go RTGI. First thing I want to clarify is going into lighting channel, debug, lighting channel. You'll notice that it doesn't really affect way out here. Sometimes you don't see anything at all. Always first check fade out range. If it's at 0 or 0 0.001, that basically means it's off. Go up to go up. Go up to 1. Now we have it all the way in the back. Awesome. Second thing I like to do, extended ray length all the way up. That just looks insanely better immediately. I'm gonna adjust my ray length and... Yeah, you know what? Four was fine. I'll leave that there. There you go. I'm gonna set my hotkey. Turn it off and on. Nice. So the new setting for RTGI is motion vectors. And what motion vectors do is it compares the frame from before to the frame now, seeing what's different and then outputting pretty colors depending on what changed. Now that's very noisy, and that's because I forgot to turn off temporal anti-aliasing. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's see how that looks. A lot better. So we can see that my cape is moving. It's going, waving back and forth. We can see that there's this guy here that's moving. 
And that's what it does. It just looks for what's moving and it gives information based on what it sees. This defaults to half resolution at four. We'll leave that as it is, no debug. Move motion vectors all the way to the top. You click and drag it. We need this to be first, otherwise it will not work. Reshade loads shaders and effects from top to bottom. So this loads first. We need the information of this one before RTGI. So we'll put that second. There we go. And we can turn on motion vectors. Ta-da! I'm going to set this to half rate. In general, just always set this to half rate. It gives you free performance. Literally free. So now that we have motion vectors on, that's it. Now obviously you're probably going to want to know what motion vectors actually does, what it improves, what it enhances. And here's a good example here. Let's see. We have this window. I'll leave. Eh, let's move this here. Shrink it up a bit. If you want to move it and it's stuck, chances are it's because it was put over here and you can't move it. So just grab the top, move it, you'll probably see it change, and now you can move it around. Awesome. So I'm not going to worry too much about this. Turn that off. These are just the explanation for the settings down here. I don't need that. I know what this thing does and I explained it in an earlier video before. Uh, let's also do smooth normals, uh, image-based lighting, infinite bounces. Uh, I'm not going to worry about sky color mode or material type right now because we're not outside. We're inside a school. Sorry if that's PTSD inducing, but education is important. The beatings from the teachers, less so. Alright, I'm going to debug lighting channel. Uh, let's take that down. We care about we care about the bounce lighting more. Just want to get that looking looking smooth, looking nice. You'll probably notice that this looks a bit noisy, and yes, that relates to. I'm just gonna put that to 32. I just like that being there. It costs performance the more you go, but I have a decent pet graphics card, so whatever. Uh, let's, for example, one ray per pixel. It's, no it's noisy. Two. A little less noisy. Three. Even less noisy. And you can just keep increasing this. I don't know if you'll ever fully get rid of it. That's up to Marty to fix up, I believe. This is definitely a... This is your definitely your quality slider here. You, know, I have 60 FPS. Elden Ring is locked performance, so I can put this up to 20, and I still have 60 FPS. But chances are most people won't be able to. So let's just play with four. So here's an example of what uh, motion vectors helps with. Let's turn it off. Now it's not as noisy, but you also notice that not as bright either. So we can turn the amount of rays up, and there you go. We see it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. This seems to just help with the brightness of the ray tracing, to be honest. It looks like it does that. But let's go, let's turn mo uh, the motion vectors back on. So we turn that back on, and we can turn this down, but. Aside from, like, the noise coming back in, it's not getting darker, which is fantastic. It kind of helps us uh, control that. But this is insanely noisy. What I find helps, though, is that we have image-based lighting and infinite bounces on. It helps alleviate that. So let's turn, uh, let's turn next bounce weight all the way up. It's helped a bit with noise over here, too. Let's just... Right? It's helping a bit with the noise there. Not as dark, not as... Noisy. But it's still got a lot of noise up there. 
first of all, we're at one, so let's go to uh, let's go to three. The default is three. Yeah, that, that helps fill it in a bit. Now, what about image-based lighting? Oh, well, that's a bit much. Now, what you'll find with image-based lighting is that it directly relates to the brightness of bounce lighting intensity, and if you have high bounce lighting, you're going to want a lot less image-based lighting, like 0 0.01 already does this much. But look, there's a lot less noise, too. Let's go maybe 0 0.02, just one click. Dude. That's not too bad. So let's just check this off and go... Yeah. And that's why we like motion vectors. Because let's turn this back off again, right? It's a lot less bright. We'd be sacrificing performance to get the same kind of quality. Like 16 rays per pixel. That's a lot. We go down to 3, and it's not that bright. We have our motion vectors. So it's kind of accumulated back up again. And you can always go higher to help get rid of the noise more. 8 rays per pixel is pretty good for that. I generally do not recommend going above 8 rays per pixel. But there isn't a brightness change. Which is good, which means we can go lower rays per pixel, save on performance, and do pretty good. Off and on. And those are the updates for, well, since ray tracing 0.2. The image-based lighting has gotten better. And we now have motion vectors, which helps a lot for the quality. Generally, you're going to want motion vectors and image-based lighting because the noise without image-based lighting is, uh... Yeah... It's a little bit much, and you'd be sacrificing performance by going up to 10. Even at 20, you can still kind of see it there. But we help smooth that out with the image-based lighting and go down to 3, and that's still pretty stable. I think that's it for today, though. Uh, see you guys in another two years. Peace.